22,000 on his very first deal. How did this guy go from flipping smartphones to wholesaling houses without using any of his cash or credit? He's going to tell you how. Stand by. Let's get it. Hello, guys. This is Ty, a.k.a. The Flip Man. Wow, what a day we're about to have because we have the smooth uh, flipper here. Um, guy that really wasn't in the wholesaling from my understanding and got into it. First deal, uh, hit a home run, 22 big ones. Um, out of Idaho, what's going on, Khalid? How you doing, Ty? Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate you, man, um, sharing your time with I reached out to you in this situation. My um, young lady that, that uh, works with me, she the one, um, she don't hit to the side, she's shy. Uh, <laughs> she's the one that uh, brought me to uh, your attention or whatever, which I had sort of seen the thumbnail or whatever, but you know, I just thought you already had a lot of videos or whatever. I didn't know that was like the one for wholesaling. I think you uploaded a recent one just to, as an update or whatever. So. Um, but what I like to do is just to get into, you know, just who you are, your background, how you ended up, you know, wholesaling, but, but, but before then. So if you'd like to just share with us, man, just, uh, if you can give a, a little background about who you are and, and, um, and, and we'll get into the real estate side of it. Crap. All right. I forgot to tell you, make sure you follow me on Instagram, turn on the post notifications so you know when I post new content. While you're here on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, so you are alerted whenever I upload new videos like this one, and when I go live on Thursday nights with my live Axe Flipman Flippinars, where you can ask your questions about real estate investing and wholesaling in general. Don't forget about Degulator.com, where you can get my free deal calculator, and you can also download but also fill out the one page contract that i've been using since 2003 that's daylater.com back to the video all right um so i'm from san diego california uh go up playing sports and i uh, always kind of had a um you know an entrepreneur mindset you know due to my parents always telling me you know um, don't work for anybody. That, that was my dad's big thing. Did not work for anybody. Oh, wow. Um, in this day and age, you know, and he was, uh, and he was working for himself. He was a truck driver. So I kind of had that, that, um, figure and that role model to look up to. And, you know, I kind of took that into, um, high school where I played football and baseball. And, um, when I got to college, my community college in San Diego, um, I started doing, uh, my own thing, which was phone flipping. So I was buying and reselling phones on eBay and uh, made pretty good money doing it. Um, it just was a side hustle at the time, but um, ended up getting a scholarship for football out here in Idaho, where I'm at now. And, um, you know, once I, once I got finished with football and school, I just decided, you know, phones is my thing. Um, I know how to do this. I've been doing it for eight years and wow. I'm going to do it full time. So, um, ended up here in Idaho doing it full time and yeah, that's what I'm doing right now and uh, got into wholesaling right after that. Okay. Uh, just, just a side note on the phone flipping, well, uh, which I, I did a little bit a few years back or whatever. Um, when the market sort of went south, I was looking for different things to do but beyond real estate. And uh, I started out in the gold business and, and then added the phones on. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just know, knew I could buy them. <laughs> cheaper than what I could sell them for or whatever. The only right. problem with the phones, and of course, we ain't, this, this is not what this is about, but uh, sometimes they wouldn't work the way they supposed right. to work once the people got them. And then you would have people hustle you. you, the, you they order the exact same phone, then send it back to you, but they keep your phone. There's right. all that stuff going on. I just saw, you know, <laughs> I was getting booked <laughs> too many of with eBay and, you know, because eBay, wouldn't, they would never challenge the, uh, the buyer or whatever. So anyway. Um, so just to move forward, um, how did you stumble into wholesaling? 
uh, this is okay. This is kind of a weird story. So, um, obviously, I'm doing the the phone thing, right? And was looking for more ways to market my phone business. And I would, you know, be driving around the area and would see the We Buy Houses signs on the corners. And thought to myself, why not try this with my phone business? <laughs> we buy phones, on, you know, put them on the corners. So I looked up uh, a couple of videos, band sign videos, and uh, I came across one video. Uh, some random guy, I don't, I don't even think he makes videos anymore. And then I stumbled upon your video, which this video was about four or five years ago, um, where you, you had somebody else with you while you were, you think you were teaching somebody else how to do it, or he was like your helper. And then you um, was basically showing everybody where you put the signs, um, you know, in different high traffic areas. And then I kind of just decided, okay, this guy's making videos. Let me just check him out. Um, so I saw you were doing the the host of real estate, which I had no idea about. I knew about real estate. That was uh, my end goal anyway, but didn't know you could start real estate with literally no money. Um, so I started watching your videos, came across a other, couple other guys who were also making videos and um, just decided, okay, this is something I want to do because there's really no risk for me. You know, I'm not going to put down 20 grand and then lose out on it in this business. So I just figured, you know, maybe, maybe let's give it a try. And then it ended up working out uh, pretty good for me. Okay. So what was the first thing um, that you, that you did? You went and you bought signs. How did you generate, start generating leads? So yeah, I bought signs. I actually, um, I know there are a couple of sites that, um, you know, where, where we're selling signs, you can get custom made signs, but I wanted to start ASAP, you know, cause some of those, uh, websites were sending stuff out, you know, two, three weeks after you would order it. So I found a local shop, which I kind of overpaid for the signs, but um, oh, still I got them out. Still got them out there. You know, next day, you know, uh, around two a.m. Two a.m. in the morning, I'm just, I'm out just putting out signs, and um, that's that's the only way I was doing it because I didn't want to you know dive into it too much, but uh, ended up getting you know some pretty good leads from that. Okay, all right. As far as I guess I guess you watch enough videos of mine and, and uh, who else did you watch? Who, what other people did you watch just out of curiosity? Uh, Max Maxwell was another one. Okay. So, so me and Mac. Okay. All right. So um, I, I assume you watched enough of, of my stuff and his stuff to figure out, hey, when I get a call, I do know I still need to figure out what's a great deal or not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. uh, plenty of people are going to want to sell. Matter of fact, the majority of people that want to sell, the numbers ain't going to work. No, that's just the way it is. Right. So, exactly. so take us through uh, that part of it. How did you figure out the the, uh, the first deal that you closed? How did you figure out it was an opportunity? Um, well, I, I watched. I did watch uh, one of your videos on how to find ARV, and um, you know, honestly, I was I was a bit skeptical on the deal. You know, I, I figured, okay, this lady seems like she's pretty motivated to sell. And, um, you know, her reasoning of, uh, of why she was selling was, to me, a good enough reason to just, you know, shoot out an offer for it. And, um, you know, I, I looked at some of the different um, comps in the different areas and, and got the number. And, um, you know, I just threw a number out there. I met up with her, did the appointment, threw out a number. She ended up kind of kicking me out of her house at first. She was like, um, no thanks, you can see your way out. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> and, wow. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's fine, you know, but uh, ended up, you know, closing it with the follow-up. I, I messaged her back maybe a couple of days later and said, hey, I'm really trying to, you know, help you out with this, uh, with this property you have. Um, I offered uh, 80. She said she wanted 100. So I'm like, okay. Um, so then I was like, I didn't reply for a while. You know, I, I was kind of going over the numbers again. Maybe this is the right number. I don't know. And then she replied back with 83. So I was like, okay, this seems like a pretty good deal. Like she just, you know, from what I, from what I was, so I didn't know everything, I, I, uh, obviously, but um, I figured it was a good deal. She accepted the offer. This is my first time somebody accepted the offer. So I just was like, all right, let's go, let's go through with it. And it ended up being a pretty good offer. Okay. What, wait up, what, uh, what ARV did you come up with? Um, so I came up with 190. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and, 
you know, the, the, the house was, was bad. I'm not even going to lie. The house was pretty bad. So that's why I was, I was still kind of skeptical. It was a, it was a beat up house, but, um, apparently somebody saw some value in it and they, they ended up taking it off my hands. Okay. So, so with the, you, you all agreed on the 83, what, what number, if you can remember, what number did you think, uh, was, um, a repair cost for it? Well, what do you think the estimated repairs would be on it? Uh, I, I came up with like 30, 35. Okay. So yeah, that, that still would have been a great deal. Okay. So, all right. Um, so now, uh, you all agreed on the 83. So you, it's time to go to contract. What, what, how did you handle that? Uh, what contract did you use? I actually used your contract. Okay. Um, and it, it was crazy cause, uh, I was, I was nervous. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And, um, I, I got there and parked and then I ended up watching your, I watched your video on how to do the contract before I left the house. Wow. Got there, drove there, watched it again to make sure I can hit every point and show her, you know, this is what this means because, you know, the wording of the contracts are, are kind of difficult for just, you know, the average person. Correct. So I had to make sure I knew what I was talking about. So she didn't, you know, second guess my credibility. Um, so I, that's what I did, and I watched it again before I, before I knocked on the door, and um, that's how I, that's how I ended up going. <laughs> All right, I give you a tip there. Uh, the easy thing to do, and there's sometimes not always a situation. Get their email address and email it to them. You know, you don't have to go through explaining. In a lot of cases, you know, they got questions that hit you up. And normally, they just look at it and they just go in and sign it. But but, you right. know, hey, that, that's what I used to do. I just, you know, put it in their hands or whatever. So, right. so once you had the contract, so how much earnest money did you give her? Uh, $10. <laughs> What's <laughs> up, man? Uh, <laughs> all right, you got that contract in your hand. Oh, how long did you, did, did you do it for? How many, how many days? Uh, 30. 30, okay. So you got con a contract in the hand with your seller. So what did you do next? Um, so... I, I just I did a walkthrough video right after it was finished, took some pictures of the outside and went home and listed it on Craigslist. You know, I just I didn't know how I didn't have a, a big bar list. I had a couple of groups in my area that I would, you know, just go scroll through the different polls and different bars were posting their emails. So I just put it on Craigslist and uh it was it was getting a lot of hits. Every day it was getting a lot of hits. And the, the, go ahead. No, I was going to say, how long did it actually take you to get somebody that, well, let me ask you this. Was the house vacant or she was still living in it? She was still living in it. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So how, how long, um, from the date that you posted that ad on the first ad on Craigslist, how long did it take to get a buyer that you knew they were going to probably be the one? Um, okay. So I did get a lot of people, um, who I think were wholesalers. Um, they were hitting me up and, uh, they were just offering low, like a lower price than what it was. Um, but what I did was, was kind of weird. I had it at a price. I was thinking I was only going to get about 90000 for it. Okay. Now, people were messaging me, um, and some people were even saying they would pay more just to close the deal. Mm -hmm. So I just decided, okay, let me up the number on Craigslist just to see. And I had it at 100 and we're still getting messages, it, but you know, people were wanting to see the house. Um, this lady was pretty difficult in, in warning people to uh, come through, but um, I, I kind of went up on the price again. So I went from 100 to 110 okay. and we're still getting messages. <laughs> now um, I did have a, um, a 115 offer. Um, and this, and this guy, he seemed like he was a, he was a, a, buyer, like a, a real buyer. And, um, it kind of fell through. He kind of he kind of got cold feet after a while because because he did see the property, and there were some things that he wasn't comfortable with um, in the property, I guess. Uh, and he just he just ended up backing out of the deal. Um, but I was talking with another guy who um, offered, and you know, at first it was one ten, it was doing the offer, and then um, it kind of came down to time for me where I didn't have much time yeah. to go back and forth. And I wanted to close this out, so uh, we ended up, you know, agreeing um, at, at the what one hundred five. One hundred five. That's twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so uh, the process of the contract with your buyer, 
what what do you did you use his contract my contract how did you all handle that or, or I, you- I use his contract um okay. you know I, don't, I didn't know if that was even the right way to do it but um, well sometimes they don't give you an option you know the one with all the gold makes the decision in a lot of cases and then oh yeah so I, I figured that i figured yeah. that <laughs> so so did he cover cold and cost yeah he covered everything okay all that. How, how did you all handle earnest money or did you get in um, so I did, I did, um, I said he had to put down a $5,000 ref- non-refundable deposit oh, wow. on it. All right. So, and he was all, he was all for that. So that, that kind of let me know, okay, this guy is serious. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that, made sure title company had all that and then met up, signed the different papers and knows that. So from the point that you all put the, uh, uh, contract, uh, you and the seller, I mean, you and the buyer had a contract in place. Uh, how long did it take to close? Um, I think it was, it was about five days. Okay. It was about five. It, it could have been earlier, but the, the, the original seller was having some difficulties, but, um, five days. So it was, I think it was a Thursday and then it went through the weekend and we closed it on a Monday or Tuesday. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So, um, how did, how was the closing set up with the seller, uh, yourself and the buyer? How, how was that handled? Uh, well, I mean, I was I wasn't even there, so um, it was it was kind of like the best the best uh, thing for me because I that's the one thing that I was kind of nervous about, um, you know, because just you know I know how some people might get or they might react seeing um, this assignment fee not going to them but going to me. Yeah. So um, you know, the title company lady just said, "Hey, you know, you're good to go. Uh, we'll call you when your check is ready." So they kind of handled everything that way. And um, so you don't even know if the seller and the buyer met, or did the buyer bring in the funds, sign his paperwork, and the seller came in later, later, or, or they just so didn't they, make you aware. Ended up, so they ended up meeting up. So it just it just wasn't. I wasn't just there. I wasn't there. <laughs> Everything that I had done was complete, and I was just waiting for that check. Oh wow! Did you have to give the uh, title company instructions on what to do, on how to set it up, or they just already knew how to handle it? They knew they they um they worked with a lot of different buyers who were who were dealing with uh, wholesalers, so they knew about the whole assignment thing, and so they, they were they were pretty helpful. What city are you in? You say Idaho, but what city? Uh, Caldwell. Okay. Well, what's the population there? What's what's the greater population there? Um, not a lot. But I think about two hundred thousand. Oh, that's that that's 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 big enough to wholesale. Yeah. That okay. Yeah. yeah most definitely. Okay. How far is that from Boise? That's on city I know for real. Uh, thirty minutes, so not not far. Okay, so it's okay. All right, so you you gonna you gonna uh, extend your business over into Boise also since it's only thirty minutes? Cause I know that's larger, right? Yes, yeah. So most definitely. Uh, so I've just been kind of doing the the um, Caldwell, and then there's another uh, city next to it called Nampa where I was doing a little bit of signs as well. So I was just hitting those two, but um, definitely Boise later on. Okay. Um, okay. So you close your deal. The lady, I'm assuming, I'm assuming the uh, title company call you say, Hey, come pick up your check. Exactly. <laughs> to take us through that. Um, okay. So uh, I'm, I, I mean, I was here at my house. I actually was doing some phone stuff and um, got the call. I saw it was from, um, you know, she said, Hey, you know, your check is ready. I said, all right, hung up the phone, got dressed, <laughs> immediately took off in the car um, and got the check. And it was weird because I didn't know what to expect, you know, just because just seeing a check that big, I, you know, I just kind of sat in my car a little bit outside the title company and just was just like looking at the number like, man, this is one deal. I know I make, I make pretty good money with phones, but usually it's, you know, you got to sell a phone and make a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there. But just seeing that big number right there, and that's all mine, um, was kind of mind blowing. It's real. <laughs> yes. uh, that's when you get the first one. You know, mine was only twenty five hundred that first one, but it felt like twenty two thousand. You know, yeah. <laughs> it felt that so many things. Wow. But uh, man, wow. So what's next, man? Um, um, I know you had did. I didn't watch the update video. What What was that about? Uh, that you did. Uh, to uh, I think it was a follow up to the the original video you put out there, right? So, um, just kind of was going over what else I was doing. So, kind of added the Facebook ads, paid ads to my um, arsenal of marketing. 
Um, which we're doing pretty well, pretty good. But you know, my my biggest issue was finding motivated sellers. Um, a lot of people who come to me are, are people who um, are just one market value for their house. Oh yeah. You know, so it, it was it was difficult to, uh, or it has been difficult to find um, someone else who just needed to get out and um, you know just would take you know cash off for their property. So that was the biggest uh, issue for me. Um, and then I guess doing, doing a little bit more, uh, spending a little bit more time with banded signs and then putting them out, um, or just finding time to do that was another uh, issue. You, um, um, one of the things, um, uh, well, how, how long are your banded signs generally stand up as far as when you put them out? Um, so, so when, the, when that first deal went, um, they actually took a lot of my signs down and I would, I was getting calls from the County or, you know, I think it was the County or, the lady was saying she was from the police department or, or whatever it was uh, that they were taking down my signs and they were. Um, but luckily I had about, I had about four signs up in call. Well, still, because I would still be driving around seeing them. Mm-hmm. So I guess that first, that first seller uh, where I closed the deal, they saw that the, one of the signs. So it, it, it was kind of difficult, you know, cause I, I stopped completely even doing signs because I, I got kind of scared because I was like, can I get in trouble doing this or could they come after me? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, at this point, after the first day, I'm definitely going to just, you know, wake up at 1 a.m. or just get up real late and put them out. That's what's up, man. So yeah. uh, you got that first check and you got a war chest going on, man. So um, um, I, you've already said it, that you're going to continue to market. You're using Facebook ads now. Um, I guess you'll add on the direct mail, the cold calling over time or whatever, another method that you can use to uh, invest. Um, before we go, man, um, anything you want to share to people that are just starting out? Um, you sound, sound like you put all this together within a few weeks and you had a payday if you want to share uh, with people what they should be doing uh, starting out as new wholesalers. Okay, so yeah, so so basically, you know, my biggest advice would be um, to just get started, you know, because ever since I ever since I made the video, I, I've been getting a lot of messages from people. People are saying, "Hey, I really want to start wholesaling," or uh, you know, I, I haven't gotten a chance to start wholesaling. And you know, the, my biggest thing is, you know, you can't make a deal if you don't start. So, um, you know, I, I've, a lot, like a lot of people have that. You know, I know it could be it could be intimidating to start, but you know you can't get results unless you either put in the work and start. So my, my biggest thing is always start. Um, you're gonna make mistakes along the way; it's just part of the business. Um, take those mistakes, learn from it, and continue to uh, grow and get better at the business. Boom! That's what's up, man. Um, I couldn't have said it better. I'm all about action. Um, a lot of people get out there and have no clue what they're doing. I'd rather see that than somebody that knows everything and don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You're out there not know what you're doing and stumbling to some money. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, but, you know, uh, if you don't try, you can't uh, fail, but you can't succeed either if you don't try. So right. um, really appreciate it, man. Uh, again, uh, hey, uh, powerful story. For someone, you already bona fide hustler. You're moving them phones, man. So it was just a breed for you to transition over into this or whatever. <laughs> it just was a breed. Just same, similar effort, you know, just bigger payday or whatever. So and I right. really appreciate you sharing your story with us, man. And um, you can your, your YouTube channel is uh, Fl- Smooth Flipper, right? Yeah, Smooth Flipper. Yeah, and that's based on your phone stuff or whatever. Okay, cool. All right, man. Uh, again, uh, you know, I guess we'll, you know, we'll we'll stay in touch or whatever. But uh, again, appreciate your time, man. And uh, guys, uh, we'll we'll see you guys on the flip side. All right, thank thanks, man. Take care.